game changer. When beneath the teammate that breaks the wind for the one in the race. Now, I had never heard of Simon Whitfield winning the silver in 2008. I knew that that had happened, but I had not heard that there was someone else there helping him, Colin Jenkins. Without his teammate, Colin Jenkins, going ahead of him, preparing the way, breaking the wind, doing all the things that were needed, both of them training, both of them sacrificing, but only one getting the gold medal. You know, as Rick Hansen tells that story, as I've heard it on the news prior to the sports and after the sports, Whitfield and Jenkins did it together, translating a solo sport and redefining it as a team sport. In these few messages that I'm sharing in the New Testament, we call this guy Barnabas. He was a team player. He came alongside and he helped people. I want to catch, catch a better portrait of him today. I want to expand on Barnabas, if you would. He's a specific kind of game changer, and it's unbelievable how this man treated other people. This kind of game changer became the wind beneath the wings of other people. The teammate is the one who lifts the other person up so they can do their best. And when we look at the ministry of Barnabas, we're going to look at the fact that there are different seasons in his life. In fact, it's not a one-time occasion. The game-changer wind lifts in different ways at different times, and we're going to discover that in the life of Barnabas today. Now, I don't know if you heard it, but the sport of cycling, the person who fills the role of going ahead is called the domestique. It's actually a French word for household servant, if you can believe it. But that's the name given to the partner in the bike that goes ahead and breaks the wind. He does everything from being a water carrier to being a windbreak. He guides the winning cyclist through the crowd to the front. And when they have to stop because nature calls, he helps his winner get back in the race and breaks the wind and gets them up ahead of the others. In short, he does a number of things to help his partner win. As we look at the life of Barnabas and we see him appear in the book of Acts, I want to define some of the ways in which he helps others. Number one, by offering strategic generosity. This is Barnabas. We meet Barnabas for the first time in Acts chapter 4. Joseph, isn't that funny? His name is Joseph, actually. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas. So Barnabas was just his nickname. It fit his character. It fit his ministry. It fit who he was. Son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Now I want you to notice as we leave that scripture up on the screen Joseph was a Levite. Levites were of the tribe of Israel that in this day served as assistants to the priests, as doorkeepers in the temple or musicians or any other way in which they were needed. Now I want you to notice Joseph was from Cyprus. Mark that down. Remember that. It's going to come up in the sermon in a little bit. In a little bit. That means that he was not born in Israel. He was what we call a Hellenist. A Hellenist is a name given to Israelites that were born overseas. They were regarded as foreigners. Most of them did not speak Aramaic. They were considered to have picked up Gentile ways. They were prejudiced against a little bit. They, there was a bit of hostility between native-born Israelites and the Hellenists. Because of the tension, historians tell us that Joseph, this Barnabas, this Joseph, was not allowed to serve in the temple like the other Levites 
who were normally allowed to serve there. So you'd expect that Joseph was come some kind of, well, I'd say he should be carrying a bit of a grudge or a hurt or some kind of disdain for others, but no, he's this game-changer guy. He's this encourager guy. He becomes part of this community called the church, Christians. And Joseph sees a need and he says, I've got some property. I think I could sell some of my stuff to help people out. Now, it's not made very clear. This man likely is not a rich guy. This is a normal guy working like you and me. And uh, there's something in the text that that suggests that, that he's just like us. If you read the verses preceding what we just read, there's a lot of community among these believers. From time to time, those who own land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Now, when the text says that he put the money at the apostles' feet, you know what that means? He released control. He said, it's yours to decide how you need it. Now, that's quite a thing in giving. In fact, that's what the tithing principle is all about. Tithing is releasing control to the leadership of the church, saying, use it wherever you need it. He didn't say, you can have this money if you build a building and put my name on the front of it. No, he released control. He wanted to bless people. It's certainly the way we view tithing here at Calvary Temple. And then offerings where you direct the giving and almsgiving where you give to the poor. So this man was a game changer in that he was willing to sacrifice and to give. Many of you know the joy of giving here at Calvary Temple. It is incredible what you have done the past 50, 60, 70, 80 years, the building of buildings, the sending of missionaries, all kinds of giving. There's lots of Barnabas game changers in this room who have given sacrificially. And giving for believers, let me share with you very quickly, is not about equal giving. We are only responsible to give what we've been given by God. And we've all been given differently by God, and so our giving does not have to be equal. It's our sacrifice and our concern and our love and our passion for others that needs to be stirred. And so I want to encourage you today, all of us can be game changers. Game changers mobilize resources to respond to the need. I want you to notice this Joseph fellow who was called Barnabas. It's not just that he gave, it's the spirit in which he did it. In fact, it was so generous that do you know what the rest of the apostles said that was sitting around that day? They said, hey, Joseph isn't the right name for this guy. We're going to call him Barnabas. And from that moment on, that's what he was called. In fact, would you be okay with me calling him Barney today? So they said, boy, he's, he's a real encourager. He's a Barney. He's a Barnabas. He's that wind. He's that encouragement. And it wasn't just for them to say that. Can you imagine how he felt every time he heard his name? He knew what his mother had named him. But these fellows that he respected were calling him Barnabas. Boy, that's how I want to be in the community of believers. I want to put a name on someone that encourages them and strengthens them in their ministry gifts. That's how the game-changing works. That's how giving works. Giving influences Now, the interesting thing is that Barnabas disappears from the story for quite a while. And we don't see him again until Acts chapter 9. 
And here is a different situation. He demonstrates people affirming grace. I want you to pick up the story with me. There's a fellow who's been terrorizing the New Testament church. His name is Saul of Tarsus. And he's been breathing out murderous threats. He's been finding men and women and putting them in prison. You know that he was virtually in charge of the martyrdom of Stephen when he was stoned to death. And he was on his way to get more Christians to put them in prison. And he met Jesus. <laughs> and he reported he repented of his sins and he reported to the church in Jerusalem they were afraid of him and they said get out of here notice this and when he came to Jerusalem he tried to join the disciples this was Saul <laughs> and they were all afraid of him not believing that he was really a disciple you talk about being shunned can you imagine? He's a brand new Christian. He tries to go and meet with them, and they are afraid of him, and they could not believe that he was really a disciple. See, they still remembered the murder of their friend Stephen. Persecuted, imprisoned, killed their husbands, killed their brothers, their wives, their sisters. How did they know he was for real? Now watch this. Acts 9. Now, I don't know how it happened. I don't know, you know, that uh, someone got an idea. Oh, this is a sticky wicket. This is a problem. Let's see if Mikey likes it. So they get Barnabas. And they say, Barney can like anybody. Let's see if he can handle it. He's been known to be able to embrace people that are hard to love. He's an encourager. And you find it right in Scripture. And Barnabas took Saul and brought him to the apostles and gave his testimony and told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them, moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. <laughs> how many are thankful for people in your life who saw the potential when no one else did? This is not, we're not making this up. Saul got connected to the church in Jerusalem because of one person. And one person had the courage to put his neck on the line and say, I believe in this fellow. And I think this next line, if you want to write it down in your Bible, game changers, Barnabases, Refuse to allow your yesterdays to limit your todays. In fact, we are so quick to tie people to the mistakes of yesterday. I sat at my kitchen table early, early this morning, and I was thinking about some of the mistakes that I made as a youth. Some of the things that I said. Some of the exaggerations. Some of the things I repeated that, that, that I didn't have facts for. And I was repeating someone else, and then I found out that it wasn't true, and I'd hurt someone deeply. Those things happened to me. In fact, my twin brother, who very seldom said anything, he'd say, Bruce, if you wouldn't talk so much, you wouldn't get into so much trouble. I can, I can almost shake thinking of those things. How many are thankful that you don't have to live with all the mistakes of your past? That a Barnabas will come along. A Howard Hansinger, 
who believed in me at 23 years of age and took me to be interviewed by a pulpit committee in London, Ontario at the ordination service. And when they found out how old I was, they said, could we see the next guy, please? And six weeks later, they couldn't get me out of their heads, and the Lord made it possible that Howard Hansinger, my district superintendent, said, I believe in this guy. I believe that the call of God is on him. I believe he can do this. And I got to walk away from all my foolish mistakes of my childhood and my youth. Game changers do this by serving the kingdom rather than themselves. Let's pick up the story in Acts chapter 11. Another critical moment in the life of the church. Some from Cyprus, Acts 11 says, and Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks, also telling them the good news now, most of us know what this is about. Up until this point, Christianity was mostly a Jewish thing. In fact, most of the people coming to faith thought that it was just an extension of their Jewishness. And they never thought to even tell the gospel to the Gentiles. They just didn't even think they'd be included, ever. And so what happens is that... Um, in Antioch, Gentiles started to come to faith in Christ. And let me tell you, this is a tipping point in the history of the church. This is a drama that plays out that no one knew, knows how it's going to play out. The good news about Jesus was not just for Jewish people, but it was for Gentiles. And the people who thought it was only good for Israel, maybe, maybe it could happen here. And so they begin to do that. And amazingly, these Gentiles, they don't know the Torah. They don't know the Old Testament. They don't know Jewish customs. They are not religious people. And they become Christians and they have faith in Christ. Do you remember what we read in Acts 4? And Barnabas, Joseph, Barnabas was from Cyprus. These people at Antioch were Cypriots. They were Gentiles. Ah! The church of Jerusalem says, we know who to send up there. We're going to send Barnabas. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus. That, Let's send Barney up there. He looks around he sees the need, he sees the circumstances, and then he decides. And I want you to see it here in Acts 11. And Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. Because he had dropped out of sight for almost 14 years. And he brought him to Antioch. He said, I know Saul's heart. I know that he understands this Gentile thing. I'm going to go find him, and I'm going to go up to Antioch, and I'm going to take him with me, and we're going to minister to these new Christians that aren't Jewish background. Wow. Do you see that Barnabas was responsible to get the ministry of the Apostle Paul flourishing after he had slipped out of sight for, a while? in fact, over 10 years? And he brings them up to Antioch and they minister there for a whole year. And I put it, game changers rejoice in the success of others. In the success of others. In fact, it's their greatest joy to see that others are flourishing in ministry that others get an opportunity to sing, that others get an opportunity to preach, that others get an opportunity. Now notice this. If you go home this afternoon and take these scriptures that are on the screen now, you'll notice that in Acts 11, 12, 13, those verses, it says Barnabas and Saul. And Barnabas 
encourage us all. And then it changes to be Paul and Barnabas. And Paul begins to take the lead, and Paul begins to become the leader, and Paul becomes the apostle over those missionary journeys. And then, pretty much the whole remainder of the New Testament, it becomes Paul. But where did he start? Barnabas and Saul. Then Barnabas and Paul. And then Paul and Barnabas. And then it became Paul. How many are thankful that in the church it's all for his glory and there are different seasons and different times and different things that happen? Wow. Let's keep moving. So game changers, don't give up and develop others. They develop others. They keep on developing others. They they keep on finding people that are capable. Now notice this story. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit the believers in the towns where we preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. And Barnabas said, let's take John Mark with us. And Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued on with them in the work. Now, I've looked into the original language of what this means. They had such a stark, sharp disagreement that they parted company. You know what the original language says on that? They had a big fight. Say how old? Right there in Scripture, these two, Barnabas and Saul and Paul, who had mentored each other and strengthened each other and went and found each other and brought them to Jerusalem and brought them to Antioch. These two disagreed. Now the Bible does not say, now I know Christians, they always want a definitive answer. Whose fault was that? Do you know that it doesn't say whose fault it was? Doesn't say if Paul was right. Doesn't say if Barnabas was right. It just says they went separate ways. The truth is, the effectiveness of their ministry doubled. Right? Paul took Silas. And do you know who he meets in the next chapter? Timothy. Do you think God, in his wisdom, knew that Timothy was right around the corner, and he said, I need to free this boy up and get him on to the next challenge, and he needs to leave Barnabas behind, and Barnabas will take John Mark, and they'll go in this direction, and Paul will come over here, and he'll find Timothy, and then that relationship will begin. How many know that that's the way it is in the family of God? People who were very close to you may not be close to you anymore, but they may be ministering to someone else. And we need to be big enough and strong enough to encourage people in all of those changes. So often we want to hang on to what happened. And we want to find out who is right and who is wrong and who's going to pay. Well, let me tell you. I live in a world where I very seldom find out who was right and who was wrong. I I raised four kids. Nobody ever did it. Nobody ever left the garage door open. Nobody ever did. Nobody ever did it. So I say to you, just leave it with God. Leave it with God. The power of game changer is in the games you change. It's a lifetime of influence. And here we are. It comes full circle. Paul the Apostle says in 2 Timothy 4.11, Get Mark. And bring him to me because he is helpful. How many are thankful that that which was awful can become good? (laughs) Amen? You say, well, I wouldn't want to go back to that chapter for anything. Do you know that I have a few chapters in my life and I'm waiting to see how God's going to work it out for good? Hasn't happened yet. I'm still waiting 
Notice in 1 Peter 5.13, my son Mark. Most scholars believe that Mark, the Gospel of Mark, was written down by Mark as Peter dictated it to him. It's really Peter's Gospel, but Mark put it on parchment for him. So I ask you a few questions. What if Barnabas had caved in to Paul and not continued on with John Mark? What if they had rejected him forever and said, you will be of no further use in this New Testament church? What if, what if that had happened? How many are thankful for Barnabas sticking his neck out? I'll tell you what else I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that Barnabas had the courage to go and find Saul, who was becoming Paul, who had dropped out of sight, who was being educated by the Holy Spirit in the desert. I'm glad he had the courage to go get him and bring him to Antioch, and they began to minister to Gentiles. Wow. So whose wind is beneath your wing? Who is the one who finds you when you're in a fetal position feeling sorry for yourself and says, come on, come on? And a better question is, and whose wings are you lifting? Because I have found that the greatest encouragement I will ever receive is when I help someone else rather than wait to be helped by someone. Hallelujah. 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 Would you thank the Lord this morning? Thank God for the truth of Barnabas, the wind beneath my wings, the, the encouragement of people who come alongside. And so today, I encourage you, look to the Lord who has a big family and he has people that you need to be ministering to and people who need to be ministering to you. Would you just ask him who that is today? Bow your head with me, Father. I ask you in Jesus' name to make this very, very clear. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.